Well, all right. Now listen, I'm going to give you 30 seconds. I'm going to give you 30 seconds, not to turn your phones off, but to text people and let them know they're not here, but will be on Facebook, be on my page, Scott Thurber's page on Facebook, and the North Valley AG Church, the number two channel on YouTube tonight, because we don't want the slackers to miss something good, but uh, we want to bless we want to bless them. So if you know somebody, text them right now before we get started. Give them a little text and say, hey, you're missing it, but we don't want you to miss it that badly. And no one's texting. All right. So praise the Lord. Let's stand together this evening. It's time to praise the Lord, is it not? Hallelujah. Glory to God. I see it's okay to praise God in this house. Amen. Amen. Lord, we thank you and praise you for this another night. We can come together and bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. I pray for your precious anointing to be a so good. Not a fake anointing, not just emotion, but the real so good. anointing of the Holy Ghost and power. Hallelujah. We bless you. We honor you today in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. We're just going to sing a couple of choruses and then we'll get to the good stuff. Glory to Jesus. What are we singing to? What's that wonderful? Got peace like a river. No. What's that wonderful name? I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river in my in my soul. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river in my soul. Well, I've got joy like a mountain. I've got like a fountain, I got joy like a fountain in my soul. I got joy like a fountain, I got joy like a fountain, I got joy like a fountain in my soul. And I got love like an ocean, I got love like an ocean, I got love like an ocean in my soul. Well, I got love like an ocean, I got love like an ocean, I got. Love like an ocean in my soul, peace. And I got peace like a river. I got peace like a river. I got peace like a river in my soul. Oh, I got peace like a river. I got peace like a river. I got peace like a river in my soul. Amen. Praise God. Bless that wonderful name. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. I'm going to bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of my Jesus. No other name I sing it again. Oh, sing it. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Oh, yes, I'll bless that wonderful name of my Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. No other name I know. Well, mighty is the name of Jesus. I tell you, mighty is the name of Jesus. Mighty is the name of Jesus. No other name I know. I'm gonna bless that wonderful name of Jesus. I'm gonna bless that wonderful name of my Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. No other name I know. Well, worthy is the name of Jesus, I said, now worthy is the name of Jesus. Worthy is the name of Jesus. No other name I know. Let's praise it. Praise that wonderful name of Jesus. I'm going to praise that wonderful name of Jesus. Praise that wonderful name of Jesus. No other name I know, no other name I know, no other name I know. Hallelujah. 
Amen. You may be seated. Hey, just before you sit down, turn to someone near you and say hello and welcome them to the house of the Lord tonight, all right? tonight in the Lord. Just this week will be busy. This this week, Tuesday night, 7.30, our youth fellowship on Zoom. You can get an invitation with a QR code on that. Wednesday evening, we talk about the blood of Jesus. And we're also going to have another uh, North Valley AG School of Ministry meeting. It's an application meeting. And so you want to be here right at 8 o'clock Wednesday uh, evening, so praise God. But right now, I said right now, yes. our new acquaintances from Riverdale Assembly, California. Now, listen, if they're really bad, blame Chris Clock. If they're really good, thank the Lord that the Lord could speak to your pastor and have men, all right? <laughs> But praise the Lord. Would you give a great North Valley AG welcome to the Riverdale Ambassador Youth Choir. Maybe Pastor Troy. He's sitting on the drums. Maybe Pastor Dale, you're going to talk to us. I don't know. However, I'm going to shut my stuff off. The crowd looked better when you were back there.
out worshiping the King of Kings. Amen. 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 Like Brother Dale already said, we're so thankful to be here in North Valley, Phoenix area tonight. We're excited for the new faces and the new contact with your pastor, Brother Thurber, and we're just thankful to be here in your service. It's good to see a church with a Sunday night service that's alive. Amen. Amen. I'm going to make, you've never seen us before, so I'm going to make some quick introductions of who else on the trip with us so that you can shake their hands afterwards and get to know us a little bit better. And then we're going to get right into worship. So right here on the back row is Brother Brian and Sister Susan Spencer. Brother Brian and Sister Susan are associate pastors of Riverdale Assembly of God there in California. Brother Brian also is principal of our Christian school. We have a Christian school awesome. that's anywhere between 80 and 100 students wow. every year. And so we are raising them up, yeah. not letting the world teach our kids. That's We're right. teaching them ourselves, giving them a good Christian education. Amen. He's the principal of our school. She works in a what we call a learning center and supervises the students there in, I want to say, 7th and 8th grades. And this is nearly her 40th year doing so. Wow. So dedicated and faithful. That is how you can describe this couple. But he's our bus driver on this trip. He's just wearing all the hats, if you haven't noticed. Bus driver on his trip. He's been the bus driver on tours like this for over 30 years, and uh, God has given him much wisdom. We have not had hardly any accidents, and and God's just really kept His hand of protection on us, and we're thankful for that. Also, in the back on this side is Sister Tiffany Spencer. And Sister Tiffany. Sister Tiffany's on the trip because she's young and fun. <laughs> She's also great help. She corrals the kids. She just fills in all the places um, that we need a little extra set of hands or someone to hang out and play volleyball with the kids. She'll get out there and do it. Um, she supervises the high school department. So all of the kids that are in high school on this platform here, and most of them are, I think I have three that have graduated and are alumni of the school and came back to travel with us on tour. But the rest of them are all ninth through 12th grade students. And she is their supervisor, so she gets them in a daily dose. I get them every choir practice and once a year for three weeks on tour. She gets the daily dose of high school teenagers. So you all pray for her. Put her on the top of your list, your prayer list. Keep her in your prayers. Uh, she's a great helper. we really glad to have her on tour with us. Also in the back is Sister Crystal Spencer, married to Brother Dale Spencer here. If you're noticing that name, Spencer, it's a bit of a family operation where we're from. All right. So Sister Crystal Spencer comes along to keep Brother Dale in mind, of course, because that's a requirement. But she also books all of our hotels, makes sure we have a good place to stay at night, calls ahead, finds our food stops, keeps us going. She itinerates for us nonstop, and so we're really thankful to have her with us on the trip. On the piano is Brother Dale. Praise the Lord. Sister Crystal's husband, that's how that works. All right. He writes and arranges music. A lot of what we sing tonight will be written and arranged by him. Wow. The few songs you really recognize, those he probably didn't write. <laughs> Not yet, anyway. But the songs that you don't recognize, if you really like them, most likely he wrote it. So fresh new music, I believe that God's children should be writing new songs. Yes. Amen. So he is hard at it. He writes new music, arranges it, and we get to sing it. We're glad to have him on the trip with us. On the drums. Bringing up the, the last of it is my husband, Brother Troy Matheny. Wow. He books this tour, so he's been on the phone with your pastor for the past month and a half or so, making all the arrangements so we could be here tonight. I direct. He plays the drums. He's the backup driver. We all work together to keep everything in order and keep these kids rested and eating right, right. And full of energy, but... Working out the energy, we found had to find a park last night to play some basketball and volleyball in. We found it. It was wonderful. Within 30 minutes, one of the kids sprained their ankles. That's how it was. You know, it's how it goes, right? But I wouldn't give, not, did I say break? It's sprained. It's a fracture. He has a fractured bone in his foot. So the doctor said, stay off of it as much as possible. Try to let it heal. We're telling him to do that. Raise your hand there and you like the attention. So if he sits down halfway through the service, he has my full permission. We're just really thankful to be here tonight. We're thankful for an opportunity 
to come and worship the Lord with you. We're thankful for an opportunity. I'm sorry. I'm getting a high sign from the back. Hi, Holland. Can everybody see Holland on the back? This is my daughter. This is my youngest. She wants her own introduction. Holland is on the trip with us. She's four years old. She's the youngest of my children. I have four. She showed up in 2020, right at the beginning of the pandemic. She surprised us about halfway through the pregnancy with a Down syndrome diagnosis. Came in January of 2020 and in May of 2020 had her um, open heart surgery. Praise the Lord. In the middle of the pandemic. But God is so faithful. He's so faithful and she's such a joy. She is the master eater of all the snacks. She eats snacks with me. And then when I say, okay, that's enough, she sits in another seat and eats that person's snacks. And another one, another one. And that's, that's what she's doing on this trip. She's keeping all the snacks accounted for. I'm just thankful to be here tonight to worship the Lord with you. And hopefully minister to you in some way. I don't think there's much more important in this world than lifting up the name of Jesus, encouraging the brethren, giving these young people a taste of what it means to minister. I pray on this trip that God calls pastors and evangelists and missionaries and Christian lawyers and doctors and senators and congressmen and maybe presidents.
she missed is the reason I got hurt is because I was beating one of my leaders in volleyball and he stripped me. Ah. That guy. Ah. Just, uh, that's not what happened. But I praise God that I'm, I'm able to stand up here. Um, I pray. I told Brother Troy last time he was in the hospital with me that I prayed and fasted too much on this tour to go sit in the back back there. This, this is my call to be speaking. And hey, devil, look what I'm doing. Look what my God did tonight. I'm still standing here. I'm not the pastor. I'm not supposed to be. I'm not the preacher here. But he's coming and it's on its way. In this next song, there's a line that says, If you've been forgiven, if you've been redeemed, then sing the song forever to the Lamb. And in Isaiah, Isaiah 6 3, it says, And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And I, I've said the last couple services that I can't wait to stand before my God and to shout, Holy, holy, holy is the one who saves. Holy is the one who delivers. Holy is the one who heals. Holy is the one that can meet any need that any person in this congregation has tonight. And I'm so thankful for that.
day of David. We will call you.
Well, well, well. Praise the Lord. I guess we can't blame Chris Clock. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Well, did you see the great big bus out there? It has great big gas tanks on it. Thank goodness gas is really cheap now. <laughs> I've never been able to figure out gas prices. Uh, like, well, how do they go up a dollar overnight and go down one cent? You know, it always goes down a lot slower than it goes up. But anyway, but we want to bless these folks. You know, they uh, uh, come just to free will offering, and, uh, um, but there's certainly expenses. They stay overnight places, and I, I really don't know where, where the road takes you. How far from California do you end up? They're going all the way across the country, ending up in Washington, D.C. So, maybe, let me tell you, can I tell you something, Dale? They need you. <laughs> Could you take a little trip to the White House for us and give them a message? <laughs> sing that, sing the song about the angels saying, holy, holy, there's a name, hallelujah. But glory to God, we're going to take an offering up tonight. Listen, if you didn't come ready to give, even though I warned you, I will take IOUs. One of the few churches that takes an IOU, or if you want to zell it, you can zell it to this number, 480 two eight zero four six three one put the message choir on there or whatever you uh, you want to do but we want to bless them from north valley here lord i thank you lord i appreciate the teen challenge choirs but lord i'm so thankful that there's a choir like this that before they get there, they've got this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord God, I pray your anointing to continue to flow. And as this tour goes on, may the anointing increase. Lord, I pray that young people get saved, called in the ministry, baptized in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Oh, glory to God. I thank you for the leadership at Riverdale. I thank you. For every one of the students, Lord God, that you're going to use to glorify your name, and you already have. Now, Lord, I pray that we bless these folks. Uh, uh, Lord, there's only one way we can translate earthly wealth into heavenly treasure, and that's part of investing in this, and help us to do it well in Jesus' name. Amen. Go ahead, gentlemen. Praise the Lord. And that's all I have, Dale. Hallelujah. Uh, has it been okay so far? Where's, where's Brother Troy? Where is he, Brother Troy? Look, can I tell you something? If you come out this way next year, put us on the schedule right now, all right? Hallelujah. <laughs> all right, go. Cool.
Lamentation is through you see Jeremiah and he's so anguished. He says this at the very beginning. He says, I am a man who has seen affliction by the rod of his wrath. He has led me and made me walk in darkness and not in light. Surely he has turned his hand against me time and time again throughout the day. And later on in the verse it says, He has caused the arrows of his quiver to pierce my wounds. I have become the ridicule of all my people. Their taunting song all the day, he has filled me with bitterness, and he has made me drink water. But later on, in verse 22, it says, Through the Lord's mercies we are not consumed, because his compassions fell not. They are new every morning, great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul, therefore I hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him. To the soul who seeks him, it is good that one should hope and wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. Because God has laid it upon him. I'm so thankful that it does not matter where I'm at in my day. Every single time I wake up in the morning, no matter the problems I have to face later on, God's mercy. 
what we call personal testimony. They're going to tell you a little bit about themselves and how the Lord has moved in their lives. And uh, we're just going to kind of have several right here in a row. Go ahead and come on, Sierra. You can dress these kids all up in the same clothes and just think that they're all pretty perfect, huh? You all do know what teenagers are like, right? You are all one at one point, most of you, yeah. They are teenagers just as we were. And uh, the Lord has done some really good things for them. church my whole life, ever since I was a baby, all the way until now, I'm still faithfully going to church, thank you God, um, but when I was six years old, um, I had to go through a struggle, and everyone knows that just because you serve God, everyone knows that just because you serve God, and just because you worship Him and praise Him and give your life to Him, does not mean you're not going to have storms or battles just come into your life. And when I was six years old, I had my own personal storm or battle. And I had to deal with watching my mom walk out of my life. And it was hard because I didn't just watch her walk out of my life, but I watched her walk out of church and walk out of the presence of God. And it was so hard for me that I started blaming, I started taking all the anger and everything I had towards my mom, and I started blaming it on God. And it had been a couple of years until I had opened my Bible, and I opened my Bible, and I found Jeremiah 29, 11, that says, I know that that's that I have towards you, say the Lord. God's a good and not evil and to be an expected end. And even though that happened to me, I know that God has a plan for me, and I'm so happy for that. Amen. When I was nine years old, um, my dad decided to leave my family. And my family had to go to court and we had to go through therapy and it was really hard on us. And I fell into depression and I got really sad. And I felt like a really small person in a big situation. But in Psalms 4, 1, it says, Hear me when I call, O God of my righteousness. Enlarge me in my distress have mercy upon me and hear my prayer. Yes. And no matter how big your problem is or how small you feel, God can enlarge you and make you bigger than any problem you face. Amen. Well, when I was uh, younger, from uh, about the time I was born, my entire family was in church and um, one by one, they eventually all ended up leaving. And by the time I was about 10 or 11, all of them were gone. And I felt like it wasn't as important for me to be going to church. So I started to like slowly leave. And I felt so, um, sorry. I felt so uneasy and during COVID, whenever the church services were online, school was closed, I had nobody to talk to, I went and I opened um, YouTube and I looked up a church service and I just put my headphones in and I drowned everything out. And I felt the peace of God come over me. And, it, um, and I decided that I was gonna go to our uh, church camp and in that church camp, I decided that it, it didn't matter if my family was going to church, that I was going to give my life to the Lord yeah, and I was yeah. going to serve Him. Yeah. In Philippians 4, 7, it says, And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will keep your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. And I'm so thankful for that. Yeah. guys are about to find out there's something wrong with me as well, and it's my accent, because uh, <laughs> I wasn't born here, uh, I was born in Guatemala, uh, I wasn't raised in a Christian home, around the age of 9 or 10, my parents decided to separate and go their own ways, at that time it was just my mom and my brother, who's actually came to choir with me, uh, it was just us three, and we didn't know what was going to happen next, but 
God had a plan for me and my family. Come on. Yeah. That we were going to go to a different country, learn a new language, and go to Christian school. And not just any Christian school. A Christian school that ministers not just in Riverdale, but across the country. And that really, it changed my life. And I know God is not done with me, and I can't, I can't wait to see what he has for me.
the presence of the Lord tonight. It says, whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it, and whosoever shall lose his life shall preserve it. Now, every one of the Gospels quotes Jesus as saying this, 
And if you go to every one of the Gospels that, where they quote Jesus as saying this, they, they all have the same teachings around this scripture verse. Uh, if you're going to come after me, you must deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow him, etc. Well, Luke, Luke quotes Jesus as saying this twice. He doesn't quote him as only saying it once. He quotes him as, 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 in his teachings twice. And it was interesting to me that in this particular place where he quotes it, these are the scriptures that are around it. But the same, um, likewise also, it was in the days of Lot. They did eat and drink and bought and sold and planted. As it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days when the Son of Man comes. He goes on to tell about Sodom and Gomorrah. He tells them, remember Lot's wife? And then he goes on there to say this verse that I just read to you. Whosoever shall save his life shall lose it. He goes on to say, for two shall be in the bed and one shall be taken and the other left. And two are going to be in the field and one's taken and the other left. And two's going to be grinding at the mill and one's going to be taken and the other's left. And, and unlike every other place where this verse is quoted, He's letting them know that in these last days we better be surrendered to Him. Amen. Because if we're trying to do it all our own way, That's right. with our own strength, and our own knowledge, and our own abilities, it doesn't work. We must be willing to surrender ourselves to Him. Now, if you say to me tonight, well, uh, because I look across the crowd, brother, thankfully, I, we don't, I don't know anybody here. I say that in that I, nobody feels like, oh, he knows things about me, right? I don't know nothing about anybody. Everybody here tonight seems to me to be Christians tonight. And that's wonderful. And you know what Christians often do? We all, often come to Christ and we give him our sins. He washes us in his blood. We feel so great and so wonderful, and he takes care of all that for us, right? And then we got a whole lot of other things that we try to save ourselves. We got a whole lot of other things we try to preserve ourselves. And Jesus didn't say in that verse, talking only about sin. It wasn't the subject there. He was making a blanket statement. You try to do it yourself, and you're going to lose. So what do you need to surrender to him tonight? I, I said I don't know anybody here. So I don't know. If you, I can't pick on you and tell you what you need to surrender. I can tell you what you need to surrender, though, because anything that consumes you and anything that is a constant fight and a struggle and a day-to-day -day grind with you that, that is wrecking you, your body, your family, your finances, that's what you need to surrender. Because that fight you've been engaged in with those things has gone on and gone on and gone on. And God knows you're not any better tonight than you were when you started fighting it on your own. But there's such freedom when you just surrender. My dad, as I was growing up, he used to tell me stories. He, he, he told me in World War II that a lot of those soldiers that were fighting against the Allied forces would surrender to the U.S. Yeah. Yes. because they knew they would be treated and fed better yeah, that's right. as prisoners of war to the Allied forces than the people they were fighting for. Right. Now, you and I, don't, we can't hardly comprehend that, right? Because, because we're on the American side of that. But they literally picking up guns one day to fight against us, surrendering the next day because they realize I could be treated better if I just surrender. And I'm here to tell you tonight, some of you need to surrender. And what you will find is better treatment, Hallelujah. better outcome. What you will find is freedom that you have been needing. It only comes when you surrender those parts of your life just like you did your sin. Would you stand with me tonight?
while the choir sings this softly, while the choir sings this softly, I want you to consider, I'm not going any further than this, I'll be right. We're not used to chords. I'm glad God is better to us than the PA has been to us tonight, amen. Listen, I don't know what you need to surrender tonight, but I got a, I got a, a whole platform here of young people that want one thing. Everybody in this room free. Amen. Everybody in this room free. And whatever it is that troubles you, whatever it is that ails you, if, you, if you're sick in your body tonight, I'm here to tell you that God wants you healed. He wants you free. He doesn't want you to live constantly fighting and struggling just to live every day. It is God's will that you find freedom in your health. Amen. If you've got family issues and family problems that you don't know how to deal with and what to do with, welcome to the club. Yes. And if you surrender it to God, he will help you in every bit of it. You continue on your own road, doing it your own self, doing it your own way. You will not find that freedom. So would you close your eyes with me tonight? In whatever area of your life it is that you need to surrender. I'm not talking about sin tonight. There might be areas of sin, but it's probably not the majority of what needs to be surrendered tonight. Would you surrender to Christ tonight? And with every eye closed and every head bowed, except for the choir, I want you to just raise your hand. We don't have enough room to bring everybody to the altar tonight. But with every eye closed and every head bowed, if you would raise your hand where you're at and say, Brother, tonight I need some prayer. i got some things I want to surrender. Oh, Emotional things I need to surrender. Physical things, spiritual things. Just raise your hand. Don't be embarrassed. There's healing in this house. Yeah. There's deliverance in this house. Yeah. God's presence is here. That freedom is here. Raise your hand so we can see who we're coming to pray with tonight. And we want to come pray with you. You can move out in the aisle if you would like to. So there's more room. Because we believe that where God's presence is, there is freedom and there's liberty. Yes. And we want nothing less for you tonight. Sing this chorus before you go pray.
to Jesus I surrender all to Jim I freely give and trust Let's make sure we're not lying as we're singing that. <laughs> Serious business to surrender everything to the Lord. There's one thing I've never known Jesus to do, and that is to reject someone that came with something to surrender to him. He never throws it back in your face. He takes it. Hallelujah. And he returns that liberty, that freedom, that peace that we all seek after. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Are you happy that the Lord brought these wonderful folks here tonight? Amen. Appreciate you so much. I'm just glad there's some other Pentecostals in this world. Hallelujah. <laughs> Even in California, that's a miracle. <laughs> anyway, praise God. Now listen carefully, please, if you will. I made supper for you tonight, and so it's simple, but uh, it's nonetheless it's supper, and it's going to be in the foyer. Everybody's invited to stay, have good brother and sister fellowship in the Lord, and receive strength from from really good pizza. And, and I'm going to pray, and it's going to serve as the grace for our meal. And Lord, we thank you and praise you for this night. We didn't do this. You ordained it. I thank you for the work that's going right on right now in the hearts and minds of people. That work is going on. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, don't stop. When we leave here tonight, don't stop. Keep your work going. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We thank you for the opportunity to fellowship with brothers and sisters in the Lord. Now, I pray that you'd also bless the food to our bodies, and we give you praise and thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Listen, it's first come, first serve, so it's on you. <laughs> God bless you.